Wichita Falls so that we... Mark Wilson reviews the city's plan with other members of his team. Uh, if the, the tornado or the disaster actually strikes us, we're certainly going to be calling upon the American Red Cross. Uh, the broadcast media and the church and uh, community groups will be interfacing. Once we've exhausted all of those resources that are available to us locally, uh, at that time and only at that time, will we then go to the State Division of Emergency Management and call upon state for their resources. Once those resources uh, have been exhausted, uh, then we can go to the Federal Emergency Management Agency and bring in national resources. As a center, we, we coordinate with the Wichita Falls National uh, Weather Service, uh, and through their Skywarn spotters, they feed information into the emergency operations center of the city of Wichita Falls. So that we a tornado warning is issued by the local National Weather Service office after the spotters see it touch down. The spotters, many of them amateur radio operators, are deployed after tornado watch has been sounded. All watches are issued from one place, the National Severe Storms Forecast Center in Kansas City, Missouri. Here, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, expert forecasters keep watch over all parts of the nation with satellites and radar. The director of the center is Fred Ostby. As part of the National Weather Service uh, mission in saving lives and property, we're here to issue tornado or severe thunderstorm watches for any area in the lower 48 states where the threat appears. And we're looking at time periods two to six hours ahead of time before thunderstorms or even some of the thunder clouds develop. Uh, I'm looking at the western half of the United States, so we're seeing what actually is being seen from the satellite at 22,000 miles above the equator. We can also look at these satellite pictures, which were looping back and forth over a period of about two hours to show the motion of the clouds, so we can see the clouds as they develop and as they move. We can also look at these clouds in the infrared spectrum, that is, by measuring the temperature of the cloud tops, we can uh, infer how the clouds are developing and moving here. And this is very important to us because uh, obviously at nighttime we can't look at the visible clouds, but by infrared we can follow cloud development 24 hours a day. Uh, another important aspect of this kind of interactive computer system is that we can actually superimpose right on top of the satellite picture uh, conventional weather data such as sea level pressures, uh, barometric pressures where high and low pressure areas are superimposed right on top of the satellite picture. The Severe Storms Forecast Center uses today's technology to monitor the nation's weather. At NOAA's National Severe Storms Laboratory in Norman, Oklahoma, Roger Brown and other professionals are developing tomorrow's technology. The National Severe Storms Laboratory here at Norman was established in order to take advantage of the severe weather that occurs in this part of the country. One relatively new piece of information is Doppler radar. Doppler radar is like a conventional radar in that it tells us where the rain is falling in storms, but it also tells us how the air is moving. On this Doppler display, we see the conventional radar reflectivity pattern that you see on regular weather radars. The colors going from the outside of the radar echo toward the yellow and dark red in the center indicates where the heavier and heavier rainfall is occurring. However, we found out from our spotters in the field that a tornado, a large tornado, was taking place at this time, but there's really no indication in the radar reflectivity pattern that a tornado is occurring, and even knowing that it's occurring, we really can't tell where it is. Now, if we look at the Doppler velocity display, we see a very pronounced signature, bright green next to bright red. That signature is an indication of that very large tornado. Radar is a strong link in the weather safety chain. Here is another link. Al Moeller, a weather service meteorologist, visits a home in Wichita Falls to advise a family on tornado safety. Normally he speaks to public groups rather than individual families. But a local TV station wants to produce a program on how to create a tornado safety plan at home. After looking at uh, your house, uh, I really think that this interior bathroom is, as you had previously noted, the best shelter within the house. Uh, the rule of thumb that we use is put as many walls between you and the tornado as you can. And 
this is an all-interior room. It's very small, and the smaller the room, the more protection it offers. So this is excellent shelter, and make sure you have something to cover your heads. Okay, and then, of course, we close the bathroom door. If yes, the house had a basement, Moeller would have chosen that as the shelter. How are you going to receive the warning? Say you're in bed at night, and the weather service and uh, local emergency preparedness people do strongly recommend that you have a weather radio, which is tone alert equipped. Now, you get weather information 24 hours a day on this, especially watches and warning, warnings, which you're interested in. If you get the tone alert feature, you don't have to have the radio on when we issue a watch or warning for the local area. But what happens when we put that warning statement on the air, we activate a beeper on the system. As you can see, it's very loud, and you won't have any trouble hearing this even in the dead of sleep in the middle of the night. Yeah. We strongly recommend that all families have it, uh, as well as schools, uh, businesses, industrial complexes. Classes are in session at the Ben Milam Elementary School. The school suffered heavy damage from the giant tornado, though the inside corridor remained intact. Luckily, it was spring vacation, and no one was there. Today, NOAA Weather Radio is a vital tool in school safety. This is a test of the NOAA Weather Radio Warning Device. Repeat, this is a test. Principal Bill Parks regularly rehearses the school's disaster plan. If another tornado visits Wichita Falls, a tornado warning will activate the school's disaster plan. And it will most often be based on what a spotter sees. We simply cannot do without spotters. Even in the future, when we have Doppler radars all over the country, we will not be able to do without spotters and that human element. So the machines help us a lot, but we've got to have the man-machine mix in this program to accurately get to the public what is about to happen to them. 